Hi. In this uh, short video, I wanted to touch upon preamble puncturing in 802.11 BE or Wi-Fi 7 and specifically on some of the questions related to coexistence. My name is Srikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So what is preamble puncturing? Preamble puncturing allows an AP or a star to avoid sending in whole 20 megahertz sections while still using other parts of the bandwidth. For example, in a 160 megahertz, you could puncture say this 20, this 20, and possibly other 20s as well. This was technically introduced in 11AX, but really found no traction in practice because it was allowed only for multi-user transmissions. But in 11BE or Wi-Fi 7, we have MU and SU both being allowed. And I think especially since SU transmissions are dominant, I think the fact that preamble puncturing is allowed with SU is a likely positive feature from the perspective of adoption. There is a physical layer signaling along with the PPDU, which will indicate uh, which 20 megahertz sections are preamble punctured. And there's a lot of flexibility in uh, opting for what sections to be punctured. Of course, primary 20 megahertz cannot be punctured by the downlink transmissions. The more interesting use case is the fact that the AP can now decide to enforce a static puncturing rule on the whole BSS. And that becomes interesting because uh, usually the AP is wanting to manage the frequency resources across the entire deployment with the help of information from other APs, controllers, etc. And so now Wi-Fi 7 allows an AP to announce uh, the puncturing pattern in this bitmap and enforces this on all the members of the BSS. So which means that they will also have to follow this particular preamble puncturing pattern, okay? This can be done in frames like beacons, probe responses, as well as in channel switch announcement frames. So those are the sort of ways by which the AP can convey the static puncturing. What if there were legacy stations? Remember, even 11AX is legacy because though technically preamble puncturing was uh, announced in 11AX, it did not take off in practice, okay? So legacy stations do not understand preamble puncturing. So when a Wi-Fi 7 AP decides to allow a static puncturing pattern, Clearly, Wi-Fi 7 stations are required to support according to certification requirements. How do we work with legacy stations, especially when people have been thinking about using preamble puncturing to achieve DFS or AFC compliance in 5 and 6 gigahertz? Can this really be possible even in theory? That's the question. So, Luckily, in 802.11PE, what has happened is in the channel switch announcement frames or in the beacon or probe response, there is a provision by which the AP can downgrade the bandwidth for the legacy stations. So let's say you want to puncture a 20 in 80 megahertz and say the usable bandwidth for the legacy stations become 40 megahertz then you can downgrade all the legacy stations to 40 megahertz. But the 11BE stations do not just follow that. They look for another element introduced in 11BE called bandwidth indication element, which actually tells the preamble puncturing pattern. So what it means is that the legacy stations now come down to a lower bandwidth where they don't use any parts of the preamble punctured bandwidth they might suffer a little bit on the throughput side, but the 11BE stations get to use the best possible bandwidth because remember out of 80 megahertz, if you puncture 20, then the 11BE stations, even for SU transmissions can use up to say 60 megahertz of bandwidth. 
and this is especially attractive when we go to 160 and 320 megahertz and when we want to do preamble puncturing for various reasons as i said this also opens the door to possible uh, dfs and afc compliance using preamble puncturing which is i think of interest to many people as we go ahead and bring about wi-fi 7 along with legacy in the 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz spectrum okay so the question now is to check whether how stations react to this uh, whether we see a compliance so that we can move on to uh, the regulatory kind of uh, compliance of DFS and AFC. But at least provisionally, we find that the Wi-Fi 7 stations can use a larger bandwidth, possibly get the benefits of higher throughput, uh, while the legacy will fall back to accommodate the preamble puncturing.